Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interesting life.com and today we're going to have a look at one of these. Yes, it's a proper good old fashioned ordnance survey map. Now, I say old fashioned, but obviously, even though it's not a super duper GPS tracking phone with Google Maps and all that sort of stuff, I still think that these proper paper maps are one of the most relevant and most important things you can have out when you're walking, especially if you're heading out into areas that you're not familiar with. And, well, obviously there's a number of reasons for that. First of all, it's a map. So, you obviously then, uh, oh yeah, I can use this to see what's around me and where we're heading. So that's obviously a very big plus. But also, the fact that it's not based on a phone or a tablet means you're not constrained to having well, phone signal for location tracking and things like that. And also, actual power in your phone to use it in the first place. Um, these, I always have uh, the active maps, which are sort of just laminated, basically. So that means that they're waterproof, and I don't know if you can see this the little edge there but obviously that makes them a little bit more durable and they don't rip in the wind and all that sort of stuff so definitely active maps are something that I'm a big fan of too and well there's something that I always take out with me but if you followed my walking videos all around Wales and all over the place then you may know that I'm, uh, I've got a slight bit of notoriety for being useless when it comes to sticking to my planned routes or not getting distracted and I mean for example I was walking over uh, towards Langothland a couple of weeks ago I thought that's the biggest hill in this area I can't resist going up it. So I went off and in the end I added so many miles to the trip. It took a 12 mile walk to be in a 21 mile walk. But that's not the map's fault. That's my own impatience and thinking, um, am I going to, am I going to, yeah, let's go up there. What's the worst that can happen? Um, but if, on that note, people say, oh, I'll get a map and all the rest of it. And I was speaking to a couple of people recently and I was fascinated to know that they sort of have disregarded the old style map and all that sort of, I don't know, actually having things that you can look at and work out and spread on the table. And I was amazed that, I don't know if it's sort of the Google Maps effect, but that a lot of people don't have the sort of, the general basics of, oh yeah, what's a map and what does this mean and all that. So I thought we'll just have a quick look and also I've got a couple of comparison photos of good old Cadder Berwin, a nice uh, Welsh mountain not far from here. So you can see what it looks like on a map and what it actually looks like in real life. And I thought that'd be a useful comparison. Anyway, let's dive in. I should just point out for anybody watching this that we are filming this on the little boat that I live on so I apologise that we haven't got loads of space to get the full map out and all the rest of it and also for the noise of the rain on the roof if that's interfering with the video. We'll have a very quick look at the outside of one of these maps. So as I say this is an Ordnance Survey map. You have the map number and the title of the area that this is a map of which is always handy. In this case we've also got the active map logo because of uh, what I mentioned before, this being one of the laminated maps. And you'll also notice this is one of the orange Explorer maps, which is almost like a zoomed in more detailed version of the pink Land Ranger maps that you might be familiar with. And it's, I'd say these are more the sort of road maps of a larger area. And obviously with these being a smaller area, they're far more easy to put a lot more detail onto the map and a lot more simple and easy to understand because you wouldn't have a million lines if you tried to cram in the detail of one of those into one of these larger area maps. Right, on the back, let's just flip it over very quickly now. You can see you've got the uh, grid of what map numbers are where, so you can see where this fits in and what maps would be around it, and also a very simple overview of what's included in this map. And obviously that is nothing like what the map's going to look like when we open it up. So we've got the map folded out. You can see just how much of an area it covers, both physically in terms of the sheet, but also the actual area on the map itself. Now, what we first would be interested in looking at is obviously the key down in the corner here. And don't worry, I'm not going to go through all of this because, as you can see, there's an awful lot of general uh, things marked and different types of lines meaning all sorts of different things. But you definitely would want to familiarise yourself with the basics. The two features I want to talk about today, the green lines that denote paths that are running all over the place, as you can see, and also the all-important contour lines, which are these very thin orange lines that denote how high the terrain is at that level. And as luck would have it, if we move up to here, you can see on the side of this mountain, 
you've got marked lines so that you can see just how high each one is so you know that at that line's height for example wherever that line runs it is the same height that it's noted there and you'll see various points where different lines will be marked but the more useful thing obviously it's very important to know how high everything is um, but also you can use the contour lines to discover and understand just how steep or how shallow various pieces of your walk may be and the basic principle is the closer together that these lines get the steeper it is because you're obviously moving a lot further upwards if all these lines are crammed really close then you're traveling almost vertically and speaking of which just so happens that this is rather handily right at a Landrider waterfall which as you can see here the lines literally are very very close together so these are very steep areas but when it gets to the waterfall part it becomes quite literally a straight up drop and all the lines are pretty much dead on top of each other so that's just a quick example there we'll have another look at these mountains just up here in a second but that's what it looks like on a map and very quickly for dramatic purposes here's a clip of what it's like in actuality just as you would expect it is an absolutely spectacular sight there as we move further up the map from the waterfall you can see that we're heading into a very good mountain range here which is denoted by just endless lines of undulating contours so you can see obviously these um, parts where it's all close together are going to be steep parts and these parts where it sort of builds and builds and builds up to a nice flat open top they're going to be obviously nice flat topped mountains so you can have a very steep walk to get up these places and then once you're there you can stay on the mountain tops and do very little movement up and down as you can see that just how flat that stays for a good section if we fetch that back into focus if you went and did all that work going an extremely steep walk up to begin with your walk off and out up to the um, tops around here is going to be a lot easier and a lot simpler and the fact that as you can see the top of the um, sort of peak parts are marked as well so you've got 682 and 676 which is, explains why there's no contour lines in that section because there are only a handful of meters difference in height and then obviously if you were going off in that direction you would then at some point start walking downhill as you hit this great level of proper slopes which those would be pretty steep to walk but another giveaway on how steep something's going to be is when you get to parts like this that also have these little rocky details drawn on now if we move up here and um, the other week i went on a walk at the uh, mole sick and cada berwin and I've got a perfect photo taken from that area there just by the lake and even though that looks like a nice flat open space there obviously you've got to consider that that is already above all of these levels here so that's a huge amount of elevation to get up to that point so even though that's a nice little flat basin enough for a lake to have formed there that's very very high up because it's already sandwiched in between these and then heading even further up now what you'll notice is there's an awful lot of rocky detail drawn on here so you can imagine or maybe you well, maybe you can imagine that this is going to have a nice rocky hilltop there and then going to be a very very steep drop I mean practically vertical at some points and then opening up very quickly into a very flat open space and then obviously you would have that lovely rocky view all the way around and if we have a quick cut to another picture you will see just what it looks like here you can see obviously this is the view from by the lake and then if we head slightly up the slope here you can see this is what all those steep rocky bits were looking like and then up the top you can see me with a snowball there but you can see all the mountains in the distance when it comes to the basic public rights of way you've got a few different options of path noted from footpath, bridleway byway open to all traffic and restricted byway um, something of more interesting note for any long distance walkers are the diamond marked paths which will be national trail and long distance route around here we've got the offers dyke path which was the old sort of boundary between wales and england what's interesting with the offers dyke path is that 
because it's a sort of old historically important marker, there's a lot of modern day things on it. So you can see where it cuts across at the top parts like this. Places just that you'd expect a footpath to go across fields and all sorts. It also joins on to these little back country lanes. And then we'll cut across, you can see there, just a very little part where it goes off and cuts the corner out of the road and then carries on before heading out into the woods. And these are the little things that I really like when you start to follow these paths. Just the difference in walking that you can do. And this, as you can see from the contours, is going to be a very flat area in comparison to what we've just been looking at. But it's just random things like that. That because I'm very much into me walking and I've been for a long time, I've walked an awful lot of various stretches of Offersdyke Path. I've got to say that it'd be difficult for me to say I love walking up big hills and having the incredible views more than I like walking across simple places like this that are just nice, simple, good routes to walk. So I'll say thank you very much for watching and I'll wrap this video up now. Just thought I'd share a few thoughts and a few little sights so you can compare what the map looks like to real life. And I don't know, perhaps it's been interesting, perhaps it's been completely useless. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you've stayed with it this long, hope you've enjoyed it. Check out my other videos for loads of walking and biking and, well, all these sorts of views from all these mountains. Uh, maybe not every single one of them. Um, of course, there's also a load of Narrowboat Life videos. And of course, feel free to like the Facebook page, feel free to add my personal account on Facebook, Twitter, all that sort of stuff. Subscribe on the YouTube channel and of course check out my two books available for the Kindle The Narrowboat Lad and The Narrowboat Lad Live in the Dream. Until the next time, thank you very much for watching and I will say farewell, have a great day and I hope to see you around soon.